tuning in on our, our Nikon Live pages. Thank you for tuning back in. We have one more program, and you definitely have to say, saving the best for last. Uh, we have with us a really great photographer who's come from Australia, as he does every year to WPPI show. He's one of the most celebrated photographers in this industry, and he's going to talk to us about something small and stunning and simple, not just himself, speed lights. Ladies and gentlemen, Nikon ambassador from Australia, Rocco Ancora. Thanks, Mike. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Small and stunning, unlike my Corrado. All right, guys, in the very, very small time that we have together today, I'm going to share with you um, my love affair with, uh, with speed lights and just how much you can do with such a, such a small little thing. Um, speed lights, that is. Okay, let's get straight into it. All right, small and simply stunning, which is what we're talking about. Now, as a wedding portrait photographer shooting out on locations, I have a few requirements. Now, my requirements when it comes to lighting very simple i want something to be small i want it to be light i want it to be versatile yes easy to use and extremely fast <clears throat> and when it comes to summarizing all those things in one little unit the sp5000 and the nikon creative lighting system is what does it for me now okay working with the nikon creative lighting system it is something that is just so beautifully simple okay so with either my uh, nikon d850 or the new z series of course I'm shooting with uh, three SP5000s. I am remotely triggering the flashes via the WRR10, which is a little tiny, tiny transmitter that sits on the, on the side of the camera, as you see there. And it allows me, through the camera menus, to control my group flashes, okay? So I can have as many flashes as I want in each group, and I can control up to six different groups of flashes, which is gonna make my life a lot easier, knowing that once I put my flash on a stand, I don't have to walk there to, to change its settings. I can do it from the camera menu inside, uh, inside my camera. So it's gonna make things nice and simple. Okay, so enough with the, uh, with the technical stuff. What do we do with light, okay? So for me, you need to be able to control the three Ds of lighting. Now, the three Ds are direction, diffusion, and of course, last but definitely not least, the distance, okay? So these three things, whether you're shooting with a speed light or a large studio flash or with a flash or you're just using um, continuous light, the physics and properties of light don't change, okay? I'm gonna give you some examples of just how important these three things are by the example of the ball. And I've used this example a lot. So we're photographing a ball, we're photographing a sphere, a sphere and what we have is the light coming in the same direction as our lens. In other words, this would mimic something like flash on camera. Okay, now the minute we do take that light and we take it away from that central axis and move it 45 degree on the side and keep the intensity exactly the same, we have something that looks totally different. What do we have now? We have shadows. And once we have shadows, we have depth. Because the idea with our photography is to create depth in our pictures. So really, what we're doing is creating areas of darkness, lightness, darkness, and lightness again. So in a portrait, that is exactly what we're replicating. Okay, we areas of darkness, lightness, and darkness, and it's the shadows in your images that's gonna give you really beautiful mood. And of course, the difference between highlighting shadows, whether I choose to then use a fill, or whether I use to fill with a reflector, will determine my contrast. Less contrast, I'm gonna get a softer look. More contrast, I'm gonna increase the drama as I've done in this portrait here. Now, when we start talking about light quality, there are many different ways that we can define this. But let me show you an example. So when we light something, we've got areas here of, um, of darkness. So we've got the shadows and we've got the highlights. And then we have something in between, right? That something in between is what we call the shadow transfer, okay? So between highlight and shadow. Now, this is the most important thing you need to understand when it comes to lighting. So the technical terminology for that is the penumbra, but that spread of light between highlight and shadows is determined by the size of the light source. So the bigger the light source, the more spread of light we're going to get. So if we have a really, really big light source, we have a very graduated shadow transfer. So even though the speed lights are quite small, what we can do, of course, is modify them with different modifiers. And they become quite powerful 
when we start doing that, whether we're reflecting them off a, off a, off a surface or whether we, we're shooting them through umbrellas and, and so on and so forth. So with different modifiers. So when we have a small light source, we end up with sharp edges, shadows, small highlights, bright highlights. A large light source, we're going to get soft edges, okay? So even though the light source is small to begin with, which is what the speed light is, it can be modified to create some pretty amazing results. And as you can see here in the, in the portrait, large diffused light is going to give us, you know, that penumbra that is going to be quite soft, okay? So creating mood in our images comes down to one thing and one thing only, and I alluded to this earlier. Don't be afraid of shadows. A lot of photographers are obsessed with fill flash. I've got to use fill flash here, fill flash there. You know what? If we don't have shadows in our images, our images are going to look flat. And sometimes too much fill can be detrimental to the overall look and feel of what we're trying to achieve and what we're trying to say with our photography. So when we're using a simple setup, like a one light setup, you know, the idea is to explore that arc, that you know, 180 degree arc with lighting around, around the subject. This portrait here was taken with, um, with an SB5000 modified through a very small 70 centimeter softbox. And this one, exactly the same results, okay? So as I explained earlier about diffusion direction, etc., etc., and the size of the light source and the penumbra, if we start to examine here the shadow on the nose, then it's creating that little loop, right? You can see the size of the light source because if this was a very, very large light source, that shadow transfer would have been a lot longer, wouldn't it? Okay, so that isn't, it's sort of like a medium sized one. So, you know, we've used kind of like a medium sized softbox. And the same thing with this uh, portrait here, shot exactly the same. This once again with one SP5000 modified through a softbox. And this one here, exactly the same. One SP5000 modified through a 70 centimeter softbox. So small light, even creating beautiful finite portraits, which is what I like to do, um, can create some really, really beautiful results. Now, but speed lights, of course, can be used to overpower the sun as well. Okay, and I'm gonna show you some examples, some of my wedding work and how I work with speed lights. Beginning with scenarios like this, where we have a bright fountain, we have, um, you know, my assistant here holding a, an SP5000 very close to, to our subject. 70 to 200 mil lens, I'm gonna shoot through the water, I'm gonna expose for the highlights, okay? And we're gonna use the flash to just illuminate the subject and give a little bit of hair light from the light that's coming in from the background and that is the resulting shot. And that shot is straight out of camera just to show you what can be done, okay? Same scenario here in this particular shot. Two light sources, one is the sun and we can see the long shadow being created by the sun. And then a flash SP5000 placed very, 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 very close to, to the subject there, creating just the illumination on the face as well. Let's have a look at this scenario here. This was a shoot we did, you know, a while back. So we've got, you know, the diffuser over there with the speed light in it and shot with a 105 mil with on the Nikon Z7, 105 1.4, which is one of my most favorite lenses. I'm ju I just love the 105 1.4. ISO really, really low. Okay, the aperture, we shot that at F2. Um, the shutter was quite fast to be able to cut out that, that ambient light. And of course, we're using high speed sync as well. So and the light was just a combination of available and flash. And then, of course, in post-production, we did, um, you know, we did a, we black and white and we, we darkened the edges a little bit more just to create a little bit more drama. So even shooting the, um, the SP5000 or the speed lights through, through windows can create some pretty interesting results as well. So this shot was taken during the day and the idea was to make it look like nighttime. And this is what we achieved using the shot. So the speed light is outside the building and the light's coming across and it's lighting our subject. And then of course, the inside the swimming pool, we've got the nice beautiful reflection to go with that. Another example of shooting a speed light, this was at night, shooting the speed light from outside the building uh, back into, into the environment, creating that nice, beautiful, beautiful effect. I'm gonna show you a couple of lighting diagrams of another scenario where we use this during the day. So we've got sunlight coming in through a window. So we balance the light First and foremost, so we're shooting manual exposure. We're balancing the light to give us the right exposure for the window and the back of our subject. And then we bring in an SB5000 with grid and we end up with something that looks like this. In fact, not something that looks like that. We get that, okay? This is exactly what we're gonna get. Okay, so D850, this was shot with, with the Nikkor 2470 uh, at F4. 
um, 250 ISO, 2.8, 160th of a second. Okay, so the, the grid, what grids do, they channel the light just in one direction and they stop the spread of light. So we want to contain, in for this particular shot, we wanted to contain just that spread of light, just to the face and the upper torso only. And I didn't want light spreading onto that background. I wanted to just leave that, that mood in that particular image as well. Okay, so this one here, two speed lights. That background light is non-existent. That background light was created by placing a speed light outside the building, okay, and using the window frame to create that shadow across the wall. The second speed light is just behind this pillar here with a grid positioned very, very accurately just to light the side of the face of our bride. Okay, so two lights, one for the background, one for the foreground. Another way to use flash is to complement ambient light. So intensity of the light, um, we have to still think about the dominant light source and establish what's called a flash to daylight ratio and the type of effect it gives, okay? If we underexpose the ambient too much, then the background's gonna be too dark and then our flash is gonna be overpowering and vice versa. If the ambient's too much, the flash is gonna come in and we might get what we call conflicting, um, conflicting shadows. So we gotta be extremely careful about that. So I'm gonna show you a couple of different scenarios where we have ambient light that is quite flat and quite uninteresting. So in this particular scenario, what I decided to do is take, take the ambient shot and then bring the exposure of the ambient shot down by about a stop and a half. Then what I did was I brought in a, um, a speed light, modified and lit the subject and this is what we got. Okay, so the idea was to make it look natural without you know, making it look like there was, a, was an obvious flash was being used. So even the shadows are soft and we got that nice, nice, beautiful effect. And then a variation of this, we moved closer with, um, with, uh, with the 14 to 24 mil lens and we shot sort of up into, into the canopy of the trees and we have a little bit of light there. And um, we got that nice, beautiful gradation of light and tone onto, onto their faces, which made it look pretty amazing. Okay, so shooting at dusk, this was at dusk, and we had, you know, beautiful light in the, in the store there, in the little cafe, and what I wanted to do was mimic that um, in the foreground as well. So for this particular shot, we gelled the flash with a, with a CTO, okay, so an orange gel, so that we had, um, you know, warm light also on the outside of the building to mimic the warm light on the, on the inside of the building, and this is what we got, okay? So we had the orange gel, the warm light inside, so... The initial base exposure, once again, we're shooting in manual exposure. So the base exposure came from setting our parameters, shutter speed and, um, and ISO and our aperture so that we've got the background looking exactly like we want it. And then all we did was bring in the flash. Now you've got two options there. We can bring in the flash in TTL, okay? And then adjust accordingly with exposure compensation. But I prefer in scenarios like this to use the flash on manual. So we have manual exposure flash, and once we set it, we then can have the ability to move the subject around without affecting the intensity of light, because all those parameters are fixed and set in stone. So we don't have to worry about the technical side. The only thing we need to worry about, of course, is um, developing the shot creatively, communicating with our subject and um, creating the next shot. This shot here, once again, it was um, two speed lights to create this shot, okay? Now, one speed light is placed behind them, and you can see that nice, beautiful rim light. Now, when you look at this shot, you, you might think that the light is actually coming from that light in the background, okay? That light in the background is playing pretty much zero effect onto, onto what's happening on the subject. So the second flash here that I've got in the background is purely to accentuate that, to make it look as though the light was actually coming from there, and then, of course, up high on this side, on a big boom, we had um, a speed light position with a softbox just to give, give us the overall frontal illumination that we needed to, to create the shot. And once again, it's all about light position, yeah? As we spoke about earlier, bringing the light away from that central axis. So we don't want to illuminate things this way for this particular shot. We want to be able to create mood and drama by moving the light 45 degrees and then 45 degrees from the ground up. So we have direction, okay? So we're able to create nice, beautiful shadows. And you can also see the form and texture that it's picked up throughout the dress. We have those beautiful underlating um, highlight and shadow areas, which makes the shot, you know, interesting. And most importantly, it gives a depth, yeah? And I know that when I'm shooting bridal, 
the brides love to see that beautiful texture in the dress. They spend a lot of money, especially in the finer details of the dress, and we want to be able to show those off as best as we can by using a direction of light that's going to be complementary to revealing what the texture is, is in fact all about. Let's have a look at some other scenarios. Okay, we've got this scenario here of, um, of uh, this house I was shooting in. And um, what I loved about this was the fact that we had arches and we had lines and we had something that, that um, you know, it caught my eye and I thought, I'm going to make an interesting composition out of that. And I thought to myself, okay, if I put maybe a bride here and I have a groom coming down the stairs and then I use, you know, a speed light with a grid maybe to create a shadow. And I'm thinking of all these scenarios inside my head. So bride and groom were ready and we're going to about to do the, the reveal. So I put the bride on the bottom of the stairs and I told the groom to wait upstairs. My assistant runs upstairs with, um, with a speed light and a grid, positioning the groom. <clears throat> I had um, a light stand behind here with a, with a small softbox and another speed light. And this is what we got to create that. So adjusting my exposure first and foremost to bring the light levels down. Okay, so I need a little bit of light, but that light creates nothing more than my base exposure, yeah? So I still got shadows and I still got shadow detail, most importantly, which is gonna help me later on in my post-production and especially when I'm printing. I'm not gonna get shadows that are gonna be blocked up and shadows that are, that are gonna be noisy. Then, of course, the light is doing its thing. The light is, is sculpting and the light is shaping. And uh, we, we did it in a way where we had the diagonal line of the stairs coming down and the diagonal line of what the grid is actually creating up the stairs with the with the shadow of the groom so trying to create something a little bit interesting just with the use of speed lights this scenario here i mean um this is actually one speed light to create this so there's a wall behind them that you can't see but um there's sun setting on the other side of that wall so the top of that tree is actually being lit by by the sun okay the bottom area of this is totally dar darkness so all we did was just we got, a, we got a flash, we got a really, really small softbox on the flash and um, we placed it behind them and behind the tree, just slightly to the left and the light was nice and high. So we were using, a, you know, a, a boom stand that's about, you know, six, six feet long and uh, to get that position of light really, really high to mimic there's no light coming from, from above and this was the result in creating that nice, beautiful, beautiful effect. And same scenario happened here. So we've got a speed light here in the background and uh, we played around with the color temperature settings inside the camera. So we're shooting here with uh, tungsten balance, but we're lighting the scene with, uh, with daylight. Okay, so tungsten balance. So the camera thinks it's seen tungsten. So it's putting in a lot of cyan and a lot of blue to counteract that. But in the same time, it's giving us almost this, this nighttime feel. And it's giving us a nice, beautiful mood to go with it. That light on the chandelier, though, is actually coming from a skylight that's above the chandelier. So that's daylight coming in. So this room was actually quite dark but the only light coming in was from this little little skylight in the background and the speed light just with a little bit of a pop just separates them and gives us the illusion once you look at the image that it's actually that light coming from the top and being reflected from somewhere to create that nice beautiful effect same thing with this shot here this shot here the stairs go up and they go around okay so we placed a speed light up on top of that with a softbox and so my assistant is holding the speed light with a softbox over the edge of the balcony and um, making sure that he doesn't drop it on top of the bride because that would be really really awkward and um, just lighting that area we've got nice beautiful soft light as she's going up um, this foreground here there's actually no light in there whatsoever all that light you see is just the speed light and those two little lamps on either side they were so dimly lit, it, it was just ridiculous. There was, there was no light in there at all. And of course, we had a little bit of daylight on the outside that's coming through the stained glass window to give us, uh, you know, to light that window and give us the nice, beautiful details of the, of the stained glass. So establishing your base exposure, let's have a look at some other examples. This background here, that's sunlight, yeah? That's sunlight. This is the shadow being caused by the building. So what do we do? We put the couple in the shade we meet her for this set that set our camera for it and then all we do is just bring a flash to match that exposure in the background and this is uh this is the resulting shot okay so we have basically that darkness to frame them and then we've got these complementary colors of what she's wearing with the background just to tie the whole composition in okay another example of using a similar technique 
this is what we have. So what, what attracted me to this particular scene was once again, the triangles of light, that background, which was quite, you know, grand. And all I wanted to do was place the subjects somewhere here. Okay, so this was shot during a wedding. So placing the subjects here, and uh, I had the, the idea of a, of a swirling veil. So we had the assistants hold the veil and just with a little bit of wind and a little bit of flash and a little bit of this and a little bit of that. <laughs> And this is what we got, okay? So, and we turned it, of course, into black and white. So going from, you know, what's quite a boring scene, really, into something that's a little bit, it's a little bit more exciting and, and interesting. Scenario here was no different, okay? So we have sunlight that's coming on. I shot this underneath um, an overpass. It was, a, it was a bridge. So the sun in the sky is creating this, okay? Now, he's actually in complete darkness. What we've done here is put a speed light nice and high, and you can see the shadow where the speed light's coming from. The speed light's up there and it's lighting our, our subject and creating the long shadow on, on below. But it's giving us the illusion as though we have the, this sunlight sort of lighting him and it's giving us a nice, beautiful dynamic composition. Okay, so moving on. During bridal preparations, metering. So I'm shooting with a, with a wide angle lens. Okay, so I'm at 24 millimeters and I'm right up against the window. So I'm getting half of what's happening outside and the inside. Exposing totally for the outside. So there is zero light on the inside until we bring in a speed light. Position very close to the bride. So by positioning the speed light close to the bride um, and reducing this, its intensity, the, the spread of light is going to be quite minute, yeah? The more I move the, the speed light away, the more the bigger area I'm going to light based upon what you know the inverse square law does. So bringing the light really, really close, and we had a very small grid on it as well. So we were channeling the light just in the area that we wanted, and um, just to create just a nice, interesting, interesting effect. And in the building here, you can see through the window, you can see we're picking up a little bit of the reflection of the bride, which gave us, you know, a little bonus. At the time of shooting this, I didn't actually see that at the back of the camera until I started doing the post and I go, wow, that's really cool. Let's just make that a little bit lighter just to bring it out. But it was a, it was a really cool shot. Same thing here. So we position the bride and groom on top of the stairs. Uh, the sun is actually behind them and it had gone behind the clouds. But the sky was interesting. There was an interesting sky. So we shot this uh, with a 7200. I'm right at the bottom of these, these stairs. The couple's up there somewhere. And I wanted to frame them against this beautiful, dramatic sky. Okay, so we set the exposure for how I wanted the sky to look. And then all we did was just bring a light from up above, speed light, and bang, there's our, there's our result. And then, of course, I love it when there's a, there's a little bit of wind as well, just kicking up the dress ever so slightly, uh, and the veil is just being swept away. So I love it when all the elements come together and uh, you end up creating something really interesting. Same thing with this. So sunlight is creating all of this, okay? Except there's a tree here creating this massive shadow. So that's taking the light away. So we put the bride in the darkest spot. So she's not lit by the sun, but we're creating this beautiful edge light uh, by using speed lights. Now this one here, believe it or not, this is a metallic reflective surface. So it's extremely bright. And to counteract that, we use two speed lights together. Okay, so when we use speed lights together, the, the, the power is cumulative, so we're getting more power, and it's enough power to overpower the sun. So we had two speed lights together, so with grids, and we just channeled the light, so we created this nice, just beautiful slither of light coming from, from above on that side there. Okay, so the, just a different, different, different way of, of, um, of trying to approach things and, and thinking outside the square. So we're looking for areas of darkness to frame subjects, we're looking for lines to make interesting compositions. When we're working with scenarios like this, um, we need basically to understand that exposure has to be set first in camera for, for achieving the desired effect, if you like, for that background. Because a lot of the times what happens is, you know, if we try to shoot all of this in program mode, we might get a shot that's great. Then as the subject moves, the camera is being influenced by what's in the scene. Um, and we're going to get results that are going to be either slightly brighter or slightly darker. Now, for me, I like to make things as easy as possible when I'm talking about, you know, doing things in post-production. So once I've set the parameters, I don't want to worry about the technical side. I, I want to set the, all the parameters and then just shoot and create. Okay, in this scenario here, we had the shot with the bride. We then introduced, um, you know, the, the groom in there. And then we, uh, 
you know, we did other things and, and, and it, was, it was a great way to work because I didn't have to think about that, that technical parameters. So the things to remember is that um, distance, direction and diffusion are the three main things you have to consider when you are shooting with speed lights. And also the fact that if one speed light isn't enough to overpower the sun, we can put two together to add to the power. And sometimes I've used, in scenarios, I've used up to three speed lights together to overpower the sun and create the, the, desired, um, the desired look that I, that I need. So hopefully in this uh, very quick, um, you know, 30 minute presentation, you've got an idea or an insight on how to take your, your creative lighting to a totally different level using the, the Nikon creative lighting system. So thank you so much for listening and hope to see you at, um, at future events. Ladies and gentlemen, Rocco Ancora. Stay here with me as we close down so we can do an outro together. Are we not twins? We're both very yeah, handsome. He's we so were much both, more handsome than I am. We separated at birth. So we finished another year here at WPPI. We thank you guys for being here in the audience. If you're tuning in, thank you guys for tuning in. One last reminder, every program will be up on the site. Rocco's is being posted as we speak. You go back and watch any one of the 23 programs that we transmitted over the last few days. Three great panel discussions. Programs like Rocco's, how much better does it get? Thank you, guys. We're closing out. We'll see you next year. Thanks, man.